Hey everybody, thank you for being here on a fantastic Tuesday afternoon. It's February 1st and hopefully you're not freezing to death like a few of my upcoming guests this afternoon. Before I get started, I want to tell you, if you're watching this on anything else other than YouTube, do me a favor. There's a link below, youtube.com slash all access live with Kevin Rankin. If you open up a tab right now, go over to YouTube, go to that link and then hit the subscribe button. And there's a little bell next to it. You can be notified when I have upcoming guests by hitting that bell. You can go back and look through all 240 some odd other episodes of All Access Live that I've put together since last year. There's some really in, uh, compelling and, and interesting conversations. Um, I've got some great guests coming up as well. So you'll be notified of those by hitting the bell. I have a couple of sponsors that I need to thank. They're wonderful people. Uh, first of all, Five Star Guitars based in Beaverton, Oregon. They have incredible selection of guitars. They have repairs. They do lessons from professionals like Jennifer Batten, who you probably know from the Michael Jackson and Jeff Beck days. And um, so go to fivestarguitars.com slash allxslive, and there is a special link with tons of products. Everything you see there, hit the promo code of allaccess15, and you'll save 15%. And since it's in Oregon, there's no sales tax. So if you're outside the Oregon area, go to fivestarguitars.com slash allaccesslive, and you'll get a great deal and save a bunch of money. I also want to thank my buddies at Rhythm Traders, the greatest drum shop in the Northwest. They're based in Oregon as well. So again, no sales tax. They've got lots of drums. They also do repairs and lessons. So go to rhythmtraders.com. Let them know that I sent you. You're going to save 10% just by mentioning my name. So if you want to be a supporter, in addition to uh, those sponsors, do me a favor. If you've got a Venmo account, there's a link right there. And I mean, I'm going to put up a graphic. Use your smartphone right now. If you want to throw me 50 cents and help support the show, you can go to this QR code right here at Kevy Metal and support the show. I would definitely appreciate it. We, uh, I don't have um, too many expenses, but I want to make sure that we up our production quality and uh, get wonderful guests and hopefully support them with uh, some nice prizes. So, um, again, All Access Live with Kevin Rankin on YouTube. And now, let me tell you, um, I've got some guests that have really sort of revolutionized what you might expect from a classical instrument. Um, I was blessed to get this wonderful Christmas present from my girlfriend. This is their vinyl tribute. Well, it's just not going to show up very well on here. It's a vinyl tribute to Prince that they put together. And uh, I've got a couple of the members, including their director. I've got uh, Doug Jenkins and Skip Von Kusky from the Portland Cello Project. How you doing, guys? Good. Hey, awesome. Kevin. Hey, let me uh, let me do a different arrangement here. Let's uh, let's see if we can. Here, there we go. So we've got the director, and we've got Skip, and uh, and uh, me tucked away in the corner. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for being here, man. I really appreciate it. My you know, pleasure. Thanks for having us. Um, hey, Skip, how are you doing? Good. It's been a, a hot minute, hasn't it? <laughs> oh, wow. It's good to see you. Yeah. How long has it been since you guys have played a live show? We played. No, we played in November, just the day after Thanksgiving. Okay. That was a lot, or two days at, at November. It was November. Yeah, that was the Revolution Hall, right? Yes. Okay, I get. To, I was. That literally was the first uh, indoor show that we did together since the whole start of this pandemic. Uh, March 6, twenty twenty, was our last indoor show. Okay. Before Were you doing that. some outdoor stuff so where you could be socially distant and? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did the Zydell Yards uh, last summer, and we did uh, a live stream from Doug's backyard. Uh, oh, really? I think that was twenty twenty. <laughs> uh, how much of the cello project did you get in the backyard to be able to do a live stream? Oh, we did a full show. It did was, you really? It was what we would have put on stage at Rev Hall. So yeah, oh my gosh, maybe even man. a little more. <laughs> Let's have a decent sized backyard. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, for people that don't know, um, and it's not uh, just a Portland-centric audience, right, that uh, that watches the show, um, tell me a little bit. I, Doug, you're the director of the, of the, uh, the project, right? So tell me about uh, how you put this in together and, and what it comprised, it's, it's comprised of. Uh, currently, so yeah, currently, well, pre-pandemic, the group, you know, we tour about 100 days out of the year. So as much as we're Portland Cello Project, we're usually all over the country at the same time. So, and it's it's really a mixture of, uh, you know, educational outreach and, and performing in um, performing arts centers and also bars. We'll, we will play 
any venue imaginable because the whole point of the group is to bring communities together and we kind of have this this mission of you know playing all different types of music that you wouldn't normally hear on the cello and bringing different musical communities together and just creating a culture of collaboration uh, how long has the organization been around been around about skip what is it 15 it's years? about 16 years i mean we didn't we weren't cello project when we first got together as a bunch of cellists playing um the name came probably in 07 uh but okay. but we started playing together in about 06 so yeah it started off at the first show was at the doug fur lounge down in downtown we're all in southeast portland and um and uh i didn't think we we're gonna play another show the whole idea was let's bring let's bring cellos to bars which wasn't a totally unique idea. There was another cellist um, in New York uh, named Matt Heimovitz who was playing the, the box suites, this box solo cello suites at CBGB's, which is a punk rock club in New York. And we were like, let's try that, but let's put nine of us on stage so that there's safety in numbers in case people throw okay. things. And uh, <laughs> it kind of went from there, so. As director, you've got to be up front though, right? So you're getting hit by stuff first. <laughs> well, I've been hit, yeah. All that. Yeah. Stars. It, like over the last few years, I mean, with uh, viral videos going around, they have uh, like two cellos and some of the other sort of ensembles, right, that have taken uh, a classical instrument and, and added like sort of a rock and roll vibe to it, right? You've seen like Thunderstruck, right, the, the ACDC um, mm. you know, tribute. And, and um, it seems to me when I see sort of like the viral reels on social media, They'll oftentimes try to put a, uh, a scantily clad uh, woman with, uh, you know, a sort of a flamboyant look about it, kind of just making it more of a Carl's Jr. ad than actually a sort of a <laughs> homage to, you know, to uh, the, the sort of um, credibility of the cello. So um, when you put this together back in the day, had you guys known each other in the community? Were you playing together in different ensembles? And then you said, hey, I want to get that guy. and. Yeah, it was the thing. Like a bunch of a bunch of us had just moved to town. Who we we were all classically trained, um, but then also played other kinds of music and we were going to each other's gigs. And Skip, of course, was here the whole time. Skip's it's old school <laughs> Portland, so um, so yeah, we would all meet at each other's shows. And and Tony Rogers was the name of the cellist who brought us all over to his house. And you know, we drink some beers and 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 just played classical cello music and which felt good because a lot of us weren't doing that but back in the day it was I mean Zoe Keating if you've heard of her was here um Gideon Freudman and myself and Tony and and um and Skip and just just a, a nice a nice wonderful group of people and uh at that point I, I know that uh Skip we've actually done a good handful of gigs together and uh yeah studio work i know with uh, nicole campbell and of course on Alama back in the day and and i know you've played with uh dave rummins on uh, on work back in the past i think at dead aunt thelma's right indeed indeed so, no. uh, dave's one of the earlier uh, songwriters i met in town in the 90s like yeah. playing at the green room and just around you know town so pretty yeah. pretty cool yeah, I mean, <laughs> and those, those songwriter shows you know the I think the typical show that you might see is a handful of guitarists sitting around in a circle with guitars and microphones and people were lucky. I mean, if, if you go to say Nashville and you go to the Bluebird Cafe, you know, you, sometimes you see these incredible songwriters that have had their songs and, and big soundtracks and, and they're, they're pseudo famous. Uh, Portland has that kind of community. They're incredible songwriters. And I think that was the first time I saw you too. It may have been out at Duffy's uh, in Northwest Portland. Oh my goodness, yeah. Back in 95 or something. But um, but at that point even, you know, you were a little yeah. bit of a, a legend because you, uh, you, you swam in all circles. And while most people would have an acoustic guitar, you know, you'd show up with a cello and, uh, and really make this uh, dynamic performance out of, of your cello. It's a lot more than just taking an acoustic cello and, and performing. I mean, you've got your electric, you know, performance that you do as well with Cellotronic, right? Yeah, oh, sure. Sure, yeah. I mean, I, I certainly, um, I came up in a traditional uh, classical family, played string quartets with my sisters for 10 years before we all kind of went off to different colleges. Um, and then when I did, go to Michigan State, I already was leaning towards rock and roll, but uh, that's where I found myself just as interested in playing uh, at rock clubs or house parties as I was in doing symphony jobs. And I played in a lot of uh, 
local symphonies in Michigan when I was there. Okay. Um, but I just really, I wanted to amplify and I wanted to rock out. So, uh, you know, uh, it's to me, it kind of feels like you, you guys have made it a real rock show, you know, and, and we can talk about the tribute thing later on. But uh, while, you know, some people might feel like, uh, you know, it's classically trained music might be um, stuffy and a little bit uh, quiet. There's nothing quiet or stuffy about any of your shows. So um, has it evolved? Have you added more members as you've gone and, and maybe tried to stretch the limits a little bit in terms of what you're presenting an audience? Uh, how about you, Doug? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the group has definitely evolved a lot over the last 15 years. So um, with with a few of us who've just been here kind of since the beginning, like Skip and I um, and, and Kevin Jackson, who's 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 like it's kind of the three of us were there for, from the beginning. But I mean, it pretty, feels like pretty much everybody on stage now with us has been here for at least five plus years and just is really a part of the family of the group. And it's it's really it's just become it's really it's become a really nice, wonderful, solid it's as, it's as fun on stage as it is to watch, I hope. So, yeah. Well, yeah. It, 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 I would imagine that you guys almost get lost in what you're doing. And it, uh, cause I know that you have a rabid audience when it, when they're, especially you're doing like these tribute shows and you've got people singing along and you've got an ensemble that is in addition to the cellists, right? You've got singers. So maybe we should talk about the, the tribute show a little bit. And, and I will be the first to say, I was so excited about it. Prince is my all time favorite artist. And when I found out you were doing a tribute to Prince and Purple Rain, uh, I was thinking, all right, you've, you've got my nod of approval for sure. So how did that come about? Yeah, no, I mean, I think you're right. I, I get lost on stage all the time. And then I look at Skip to figure out what I need to do next. Oh, not um, lost in, but, but lost in each other, you know, <laughs> it, it doesn't necessarily matter what the crowd is, is doing, right? Yeah, no, um, how did that get started? We we started playing, oh man, a few, five or six years ago with a, a new drummer named Tyrone Hendricks, um, who's just absolutely, absolutely wonderful. And I remember the first time, so Tyrone's played with Prince and and um, that was kind of, and and just a lot of, a lot of stories from Tyrone about Prince that really inspired us to be like, let's, let's do things a little differently now. So the first time we played with Tyrone, um, our friend Farnell Newton invite, he said, you know, you got to play with this drummer. You got to check him out. And I was like, and I was like, okay, can he read our charts? You know, cause we had everything written out and he's like, no, he can't read your charts, but you want to play with them. And I remember being nervous about it. Like, well, even if you can't read the music and I mean, it was playing with him the first time was, was just heaven because he doesn't need to read the charts, even as he was playing Radiohead and stuff with us. And just, you know, there's a lot of changes and all that, and it didn't matter. And um, it was just, it was just a really, really wonderful connection. And so he's become a really focal point of the group. In fact, we're playing our next show in Portland's March 13th, and he's curating that whole show. It's a collaboration with the PDX Soul Collective. So a lot of soul singers on stage with us, um, but Tyrone's history with Prince is what really led to it. I remember we were, actually, we were in Montana. No, 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 no. Oh, man, Montana, Montana people might get upset about this. It was Wyoming. Um, but we were, we, were in, right. we were in Wyoming, and we were all in a, it was like a night off. We were all in the hot tub in the hotel, and Tyrone's just telling us some some Prince stories um, for the first time, really, because he he's very humble, and he doesn't yeah. usually share all the stories. And um and showed us a video of Liv Warfield, who was you know, Prince protege, backup singer, and um, that he he did with her on like Fallon or something, and like the performance oh, is through the roof. I mean, if you Google you uh, Liv Warfield and, uh, and why Fallon, do you lie? Yeah, that's it's the one. Yeah, that's you the one. The yes, that's oh, the one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And so it's got new power generation horns playing on the track, and Tyrone's playing drums on that. So yeah. go Google the video. It's after this. It's amazing. But I remember seeing that, and he's talking about just the work ethic the work ethic of Prince and what he would do with Liv and you know, they're working all day playing songs over and over and over again and, and just really doing that. That's something we've never done. Right, Skip? I mean, we um, <laughs> we do like two rehearsals to learn 20 songs. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> we the music. So. You know what? I, I don't want to interrupt you there, but this is one thing that non-musicians might not understand. If you've got quality professionals like you guys and people like Tyrone, um, they really are truly rehearsals, right? You're not getting together to practice because as a musician, you practice on your own. So you guys practice on your own, you come together and the rehearsals are just tightening things up, right? As an ensemble. So, so exactly. kids, if you're out there practicing, you should know, right. don't practice with your ensemble, practice on your own, show up, and then you can rehearse with the group. All right. Yeah. Sorry. End of my rant. 
you know, but I think that's true. And, and, but what Tyrone was showing us is like, yeah, we can do that. Or you can take it to the next level, which was really, I think how Prince approached things was like, yeah, you can do that. Or you can take it to the next level. And we got together all of some February, I don't know, a million years ago at this point, but Skip, me and, um, and Lauren and Diane and Kevin. So five of us cellists and we memorized our whole set for the next tour. We'd never done that before. We're talking about like really hard stuff, like Elgar cello concerto to Prince to whatever, just like really <laughs> crazy stuff. And um, I don't know, Skip. I mean, how did that feel to you playing like that? Because it was just so different than anything we'd ever done over a decade. Yeah, r really. For for our group, it was. I mean, it, it's the only group that I'm in that I actually read music in. Okay. But but um, but it was amazing to me for us all to be off it because just like you said earlier about falling into each other, getting lost in each other, you, you, sometimes you get lost in reading music. So when, when you memorize it, your eyes are on each other and you start talking about like, uh, when I'm here, I'm going to look at you because you'll, that'll be your cue to enter and that kind of uh, thing. Um, I, I thought it was wonderful. I would love to do it again. Uh, and at this point some of that stuff still is pretty ingrained in me um i i probably could play uh love me or leave me uh without the chart in front of me still so well, and maybe elgar i am you are a better <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I had Liv on the show about a year, a year oh, get, no way. towards the beginning, mm -hmm. and I was so excited to talk to her about Prince, of course, and mm -hmm. one of the things that she mentioned, and I'm sure Tyrone shared this, and maybe one of the things that you guys employed in, in getting um, to that next level, she would tell me about the work ethic, and she was, you know, uh, you know, not many years prior to that, right, she wasn't in a band, right, she, she was discovered, doing karaoke here in Portland at a karaoke bar. She had never done the band thing. So she talked about when Prince took her under his wing and brought her out to Paisley Park. She said, you know, he, you get a call to say, you know, get here at the studio at 4.30 a.m. And she said, I might show up at four to try and beat him there, but there's no way to beat him there. Cause not only did he live there, he never left the studio. She said he was there all night. He would have been there working on stuff all night. and then expect everybody to put in 110% just like he did. And the work ethic sometimes, and I've talked to several people that worked with him, it burned them out and they weren't able to pull up that kind of uh, regiment, you know, but I would think with nine cellists, and then if you, you take the ensemble with your, your project and you've got horns and singers and then the, the cellos as well, um, that's a lot of herding cats, right? So if you had uh, to deal with the whole, working out people's schedules and, and trying to get rehearsals together on, on times that, to me, that just seems almost impossible to get people that structured. Yeah. <laughs> are you the prince? Are you, Doug, are you the guy that whips the, the cracks the whip like Prince did? Oh, not like Prince did. I don't think anybody could do that. But yeah. no, I mean, I, I, I make schedules. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it is a lot to get together. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot of people to wrangle for sure. But I mean, it's worth it. Like, that's what makes it so special is everybody brings their own unique, unique flavor to it. So, And you've toured, you said 100 dates a year you guys been to shows? That was our average for, for, for a few years there. Yeah. Prior, prior to the pandemic, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now that uh, things are hopefully kind of winding down with that, you guys are doing some shows back on the road again. You talked about a show in Portland, March 16th. Uh, yeah, and, for that one. And, yeah. and, oh, okay. And then, um, and I'm guessing I, I took the link off for a second, but if people want to know about dates, I'm guessing they could probably go to Portland Cello project com. And, yeah. uh, okay. And then you're taking this show on the road a little bit from what I understand as well. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The Prince show will be on the road through March and April. So a okay. lot of West coast dates and then going out to the Midwest and back. So, oh, okay. And I'm headed back in that direction. I know, uh, you're going to be visiting some dear friends of mine. And, and so they've, uh, they've been hanging backstage here patiently waiting, but, uh, but Renee Romans, her stone city events, she's got you guys coming out in, uh, in April. And, uh, if you guys are cool with it, maybe we could bring her on and talk a little bit about, um, it, it, she can, uh, they, she could show the poster that they've got worked out and, and maybe talk about the venue and how people might be able to get tickets, uh, for that, if that's cool. I think that's cool. Skip, is that cool with you? Okay, as long as it's cool with Skip. Absolutely cool. All right, so security, uh, can you bring them from backstage? Okay, so uh, Renee, and, uh, we've got uh, 
Let's see. We've yeah. here we go. There we this, go. How, how's that? <laughs> uh, there's uh, Renee Romans and uh, and Dave Romans. Thank you guys for being here from Lewistown, Montana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. And uh, um, so for uh, for those folks that don't know, that gentleman in the uh, the glasses there in the corner uh, is uh, not only my former bandmate, one of my favorite people on the planet. Played a lot of music together over uh, decades now. Took me on my very first tour as an 18 year old, as a matter of fact. Uh, but uh, but now uh, he's back in Lewistown, and he um, I know that uh, you worked on some graphics for Renee for this upcoming poster. So maybe you can be uh, Vanna White, show off the poster while Renee talks about what uh, what's happening on April 16th there. Well, um, <laughs> Portland Polo Project graciously uh, said yes to coming to the middle of Montana, a good 200 miles from anywhere else to um, do a listening room benefit um, for a local, pub, a local charity. And they're gonna be performing in an old airplane hangar that was um, turned into like a 1950s diner slash gas station. Okay. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's amazing. It's a really cool place. And, yeah. Um, there's, it, it's a great venue, and I think these guys are gonna enjoy it. So, and I'm and I'm really looking forward to seeing Skip again. We we've yeah. Skip and I have done a bunch of stuff together, and and we seem to bump into each other every few years. I ran into him at Red Ants Pants Festival a couple of years ago with the band that, there. That was that, <laughs> that was, was awesome. crazy. Yeah. We we, we drove straight straight home from our set there so <laughs> it was crazy back to back to portland um yeah. you mentioned the living room renee so tell me what what uh, is the living room organization about uh listen listening, oh, listening room, room. Sorry. sorry yeah yeah I mean, um well uh, i feel like our town has a lot a lot of bar music um so i wanted to bring something a little bit different um to lewistown and also make it something that could benefit of public charity and it just so happened the owners of this hangar um are excited and also i think one of them is a cello player as well so they were thrilled to be able to help us host it oh that's cool right on yeah so nobody has to compete with the bar scene or or anything everybody likes they like it because it's you're about you know five to 20 feet away from the musicians and it's really right. nothing like it in it right now I think six feet is the separation that you guys need to have, right? So the uh, I'll make it sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so the, um, I noticed there's a link there, www.hiddenmt.com. That's where they can get links to um, the Portland Cello Project. Uh, right, just go to upcoming events. And okay. actually, this was perfect timing because your guys' tickets went on sale today. Oh, nice. So encourage everybody to buy tickets. Yeah, get them before <laughs> yeah. they're sold out. The, um, the uh this show that purple rain show is incredible you know you uh because you've got it's obviously not just music from the purple rain record you've got old stuff and and uh you know i would think that maybe non-prince fans might think some of these songs are obscure but the way that you guys cover like get off it was one of the coolest things ever man I, I loved it so much uh and you've got the whole project with tyrone playing and you've got uh you got singers and and it's essentially it's live yep yeah we'll have jane so if you've heard the record and you've heard beautiful ones that's the singer oh that'll be there wow <laughs> so. okay that's ridiculous that yeah. that treatment of that song which i feel like is one of the greatest rock ballads of all time you know but uh um wow what a voice oh man uh you know so you're traveling is it nine people you're traveling with or more i would guess it's it's nine for this that's okay. that's what we kind of had to cap it on just given just given the way things are so yeah okay. but that's the full show i mean you're not gonna nothing will be missing you, we, <laughs> there might be there might be slightly fewer cellists but that's we have a lot so it's, it's probably okay <laughs> and you're, you're bringing merch on the road with you i would hope right oh uh, yeah yes most likely yes because <laughs> not not only can you get this great collection with uh you know all these wonderful musicians but of course the vinyl has to be purple right so if uh if, yeah yeah you know uh, even if you're not a prince fan folks you, you've got to check the show out because um it's well, i think it's probably the most uh culturally advanced uh event that you might have in lewistown until dave rummins plays it <laughs> so, you might um, be right yeah um and i'm guessing stone city has some other events coming up as well 
Uh, yeah, we're um, decided to dive in and commit to um, an Inside the Song series, which are three singer-songwriters at a time take the stage. I'm trying to model it very loosely after of MTV's Unplugged. Oh, cool. Um, and it's I'm getting a really good response from people who want to sponsor and just probably three years worth of musicians that are interested. So <laughs> I'm just hoping that um, the community and people in the surrounding communities also latch on like that. Right on. Yeah. Well, guys, if you're watching this and it's uh, prior to April 16th, make sure that you go to hiddenmt.com, grab some tickets, and uh, and when you're there, say hi to Dave and Renee. I am I'm really jealous of you, Doug and Skip, for getting to go and, and hang out with my dear friends in Montana. <laughs> so uh, you know, share a little bit of my love with them, will you? You yeah. bet. And uh, and and Renee and Dave, I really appreciate you guys taking time out from the Lewistown Trombone Project that you guys had working on earlier. So I'll, I'll, I'll let you get back to it. And um, and really, congratulations! I'm really glad to know that you're going to bring Portland Cello Project to Montana. Um, yeah, so thank so, you. Thank see you guys back. in April. Yeah, yeah right. see you soon. Okay. Right. Take yeah. care, guys. Looking forward to it, guys. Um, all right. Well, hey, listen, um, one of the things I was going to ask you about on a tour like this, uh, cellos are huge, right? So when I'm out on tour with my band, I'm really fortunate that drums are all backlined for me, right? So I show up and there's a drum kit waiting for me and I can set up some electronics and bring my sticks. And uh, most of the time we're traveling in a van or, you know, we're flying in for a gig. If you've got nine people traveling around with cellos and you've got a, a band, do you have a tour bus or how are you guys moving all this stuff? Do you get a big, huge U-Haul? We usually, I mean, with I'll try not to get too into the technical logistics because there's a lot of this depending on the things that will be very mundane to hear all the details. <laughs> but we, we have, we've got a pretty well-oiled system and one of the best parts of that system, or one, I guess one of the most consistent parts is Skip and Kevin um, will drive a big sprinter and which are, which are really nice, you know, areas in the back where we can put the cellos. And that's usually the case is they, they take one for the team and do a lot of driving. And sometimes <laughs> we're with them on the whole thing. And sometimes some of us are flying and sometimes we're flying some cellos and the cellos get their own seats on the airplane when they fly, you know, stuff Great. like that. I was going to ask about that. So yeah, you've got, uh, there's no way you're checking a cello or putting it in the overhead bin, right? So, yeah. so you can actually put it in uh, one of the chairs. Yeah, you buy a seat for it. So, like we play, you know, we, every couple of years we'll play up in Alaska, and you got to fly up there. So, or at least I have to fly up there. And so, we'll, you know, we'll fly our cellos and seats and stuff like that. So, is it cheating to have like an electric cello where you can, uh, you know, take a smaller, basically like like size of a Chapman stick and be able to plug that in? <laughs> that wouldn't work for us. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's got to be the uh, the the true organic. I think that's you know, so much of the, so much of the show is that aesthetic of being able to go from the the loud amplified to the to the very acoustic. So and you wouldn't get that on electric. So sure, you know, um, I, I mentioned some of those other you know um, sort of trendy things that were going on right now, like like two cellos, right? A lot of that is uh, is about the show. It's the aesthetic and. Uh, um, I think if I remember it, like those guys are twins or, or something, right? And they're they, the guys that are doing it are there's a lot of head banging going on, right? And so it's more about the the image, and it's unfortunate that it kind of became gimmick. And you know, there's one thing about the integrity of what you guys do that I think um, it's unexpected, you know, to 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 show up and see, wow, you guys are you're kicking, you're doing a rock show with classically trained musicians and the, the music, there is integrity there and the musicianship is, is top notch. I know uh, um, people might be surprised by that, but- Well, we're definitely know. a gimmick, but hopefully we're a gimmick with integrity, yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> Portland... try, I, mean, I think that's always been the point is to try to keep it quality regardless. I mean, we've made, we've made very intentional decisions to not go in that, in the overly gimmicky route. I mean, keep it fun, yeah. Keep it communicative, but you know, keep keep the egos out and just try to have fun with it and build connections with it and, and make sure the music's good, you know, don't just phone it in too. Which is why we got skip. Skip always keeps me on the level. So I, I would probably phone it in, to be honest. Oh, I don't think you do. I mean, uh yeah, it's it, it's a funny thing though too. Like I run into people all the time, they're like, Wow, 
you don't see a cello every day in a rock club and i'm like i do <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah man. well speaking uh, of maybe we can, we can talk but, a little bit about your you know your well, rock. and honestly i've i see more and more other cellists in rock mm-hmm. environments and uh and you know at one point before the internet like a lot of young people i thought i invented <laughs> this you know um and then i you know the internet came along and i realized well there's other people and i met gideon who's been doing it even longer than me um wow. when it comes to uh you know looping and and just approaching you know playing original music on the cello from a classical background but that is not necessarily classical sure. uh, so i yeah but i it's it's odd because uh Prior to 2006, or when we first started getting together, I had talked to Alicia Rose at the Doug Fur in probably 2005. I was like, you know what? I was thinking it would be awesome to do a show of all these cellists that do this other other stuff. And she was like, yeah, that sounds great. But I never had the... I, I'm big on ideas and short on follow-through when it comes to <laughs> um, some of those. So I'm really glad that this happened, you know, that and that I've been a part of it since the beginning um as soon as the concept was floated out there i was like well if there's going to be a group of cellists in portland i i want to be a part of it because i feel like i've been trying to be a cellist in portland forever you know yeah well i mean studio for sure i mean i know in your situation i know that uh a lot of the the time that i would see skip would be uh, in the various studios. I know you were kind of the go-to guy when somebody needed some studio work done for, with, with cello, um, and being able to branch out and be maybe the guy that gets to be on stage in a rock club or in a venue. Um, a lot of that's probably word of mouth, right? Once people realize, oh yeah, there's this guy. Now that Portland cello project has been around for a while, there's not just this guy. Everybody probably has their own unique approach and different sounds. Uh, I would love to know from you, Doug, uh, because we couldn't fit them all here on the screen, I'd love to know if you wouldn't mind just kind of going through each of the members and just uh, you know give them a little shout out and, and maybe talk about what they bring in terms of you know a background or approach. You know, we know a little bit about Skip, but uh, but your background, where are you from? I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii, originally. Okay, <laughs> I moved to Portland about 2005 or 2006 or something like that, um, and yeah. Um, I don't know. In my background, I don't. I mean, I feel like at this point, my background is Portland Cello Project. I mean, I've written over a thousand string arrangements since this group started for this group and other groups, but I mean, mostly for this group. And it's just like this has become like my time before that was trying to do a lot of different things and playing in different bands and that sort of thing and playing on records like Skip's talking about and stuff too. But it's um, you know, when when this group became what it was and I started you know, wrangling it around, this became the only thing that musically I had space to put energy into. So sure. it's kind of my identity, I guess, when it comes to the cello. Yeah. How about some of the other uh, persons in the project? Yeah, I'll go through the um, the touring group, the, okay. the group that, that's really done, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of shows with us. So we got Diane Chaplin, who sits on the, you know, far stage right, um, kind of leading us in a lot of ways. She, her, I, I'm still always amazed and honored that she plays with this group and that she has for so many years because she's just such a phenomenal classical cellist um and also just always so willing to do things you know that go outside of that boundary so when we're playing concertos on stage like the algar concerto we don't play the slow movement to the fast movement she's she's nailing that from memory um in rock clubs to symphony halls and that's really fun and um just a really really special human being we're lucky to have her um to her left on stage would be Skip. You, you know him. Uh, to his left on on a, on a nice tight touring ensemble would be Kevin Jackson, who's been there since the very first show. Um, writes a lot of arrangements as well, um, including any, any video game theme we might play or a lot of movie themes and stuff like that. Going in that direction um, just brings a really wonderful energy to the stage in that regard. Um, and then I would sit next to Kevin most of the time. And then to my left would be Lauren McShane, who lives up in Seattle, actually, um, but has just become a part of this group. And she usually tour manages as well. Um, and so also brings a very classical, beautiful tone to things and just, um, I don't know, keeps us less classical players a little bit more honest. So 
Um, and then on stage as well, you know, we have Farnell Newton plays with us on the trumpet as just, I mean, he's at this point as, as much of a cellist as the rest of us. I don't know if that's an insult or not. He'd have to tell me, but, um, but he's with us and he's, he's played all kinds of music. He's played with everybody from, you know, Aretha to Bootsy Collins, Jill Scott, all that. So we're really lucky to have his energy and, and what he brings to directing the music as well. We got JP Downer on the bass, who's um, just he, he and Tyrone together are the most wonderful rhythm section. I don't I don't want to play with anybody else anymore, so it's really nice. And then yeah. of Tyrone on the drums. So that's yeah, man, Tyrone. Uh, you know, he and I have traded uh, messages about having him on this show for about fifteen months now. <laughs> I can't wait for it, but. Uh, yeah, I'm, it'll, I will be guilty again of just, you know, wringing every print story out of him, you know, so I um, don't forget, don't, he's he's so humble. He won't even tell you everybody he's played with. I mean, don't forget Stevie Wonder and all that. Like, there's just there's a lot there. So. Yeah, no, it, it, he's uh, he's not only well rounded and I love the humility that that really is a nice quality. But uh, I've seen him play. One of my favorite local bands in Portland is Tango Alpha Tango. And I know that uh, I watched videos of him playing with them in uh, South by Southwest many years ago. And and he, they took over a little club after their performance at South by Southwest and just set him loose on a drum solo. And everybody in the club just sat, you know, a mouth agape. And uh, yeah, he, he has the, the ability to do that and, and more. Um, and smiles while he does it too, which I love. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, during the pandemic, <laughs> his drum solos are always so funny. From from going down to, to to not even playing to like, what did you do during? We played that one show. We hadn't played together in like a year, year and a half, and we were playing outdoors. And and he takes his mask and puts it over his face. That was really good too. So. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, because you know, I mean, the Prince show has been around for for a couple of years now, right? That you guys have been doing. Um, what, what, uh, tell me about some of the other ensembles and artists that you played with prior to that. Oh, a, a big mixture. Skip, what are some of your favorite collaborations we've done with folks? There's a lot. I know. Um, I, I really enjoyed Emily Wells. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, when we did that tour with her, um, uh, gosh, I mean, we've played with so many local, uh, powerhouses that, have every right to be known nationally, but, uh, Aaliyah Luya choir. I love, uh, that. Um, I actually just recently watched a video of us playing with storm from like 2007. Um, we wow. shot it at the musicians union. I forgot that Jim Brumberg was in her band then. Yeah. And so it was like funny watching it just and you know, I'm like, I showed it to Chris and I was like, look how young we look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel that. And of course, Storm <laughs> Storm still looks the same. So, yes, yeah. right. <laughs> Fair. how does she do it? You know, uh, and, you know, Skip, you and I, we'll get to that in a little bit. I know that I'll be seeing you about 24 hours from now playing with Storm at uh, Dante's as well. Uh, so, maybe before we talk about that, Give me some bucket list items of, of artists that you'd like to perform with. And you talked about people that, that uh, Tyrone had played with. And, you know, I mean, if, if you know, unfortunately, if, if Prince was still around, I know that he, I'm sure, would be blessed to have the Cello Project um, backing him for a bunch of shows. But um, how about, you know, some other bucket list items of, of artists that you think would be a great collaboration with you? Hey. Can you I were... just, I, I, just to throw this in, the last show that we played in 2020, we had members of the new power generation horns and like three, like including Tyrone and uh, 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 Arietta, there Saida and uh, and I'm Adrian a blank, and Adrian Crutchfield, like that that was pretty darned amazing. I mean, just uh, just to like have, you know, sort of that connection to the source material, and I, you know, the. I mean, it's it's a shame that that we lost. It, it was a tragedy to lose Prince when we lost him, but that year we d ended up doing um, our dance party was all Prince mm -hmm. that year, and and if that hadn't happened, this album probably wouldn't have happened. Um, if the pandemic hadn't happened, we'd probably be working on another album, and so this this album came. We finally got copies of it after everything shut down like so um so we really haven't been able to tour behind it but 
we also usually we toured behind the Radiohead album for a couple of years. Um, but this seems to have even more legs because it we haven't been able to go out and perform it live. So I'm really excited about it. I think Jane is one of the most purely gifted singers that we've ever, you know, uh, worked with. They just, uh, there's, there's a window to heaven or to some other dimension when he opens his mouth and sings. Ah. Um, and, and uh, that's not to take anything away from any of the other singers we've worked with. He just really is elevated. In a way. Yeah. yeah there, there's a gift there for sure. And Jane, his voice is, uh, uh, you know, I think it'd be interesting to have seen a collaboration with Prince and Jane, right. You know, that would be awesome. Uh, you know, how about, uh, Doug, if, if, you know, somebody just came calling, they said, you know, we really need to have something unique for a uh, Super Bowl halftime show. Right. Yeah. There, I mean, there've been a couple of artists that I think we've really like paid tribute to ourselves that would be really special. Um, I mean, just like Skip was just saying, we did two years of touring Radiohead's OK Computer, you know, translated from beginning to end with Patty King from the Shin singing and stuff. And mm -hmm. that was super fun. Um, so Radiohead would be definitely one. And then Beck too, I feel like um, we were the first group to record Beck song reader. So Beck took 20 songs that were written as sheet music and didn't record them. I released them as a book and was like, here, you all learn this, you know? And, and I was like, they wrote, he wrote this for me. So we, um, we, we learned it all and, and toured that for a bit, which was really, just really special. You know, there's just a lot of special music there. So, I mean, those are, those are two that come to my mind. And then, um, I mean, anything hip hop, if any hip hop artist would ever have us, that would always be an honor. So. Right. I like, yeah. So tell me about that. I mean, who do you feel like it would be a, a great blend? I mean, I don't know. I think I'd just be like wanting to listen in awe to so many. So there's, I mean, I just love hip hop and I, there's so many artists that I really love that, that just really keep me thinking and keep my brain working. And, and it's such a vibrant art form here in America. So yeah. I think there's a lot of that, but I mean, you know, early, early on, we would do a lot of like Kanye West covers and like Jay-Z and stuff like that. Like we're talking 10 years ago now. Um, that, and those were our viral videos. And we would always be like, whoa, we got half a million hits on a video for doing a Kanye West song. Let's do more of that. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of that, I mean, Kendrick Lamar, stuff like that. So I don't know, the mainstream, wonderful stuff that makes you think anything that makes me think. So, I, uh, I, I love that idea. There's a little bit of that vibe, too, in the Prince show that you do, you know, because there's certainly funk, hip hop, R&B, all mixed, you know, with with, you know, his music. Um, I, I was picturing you guys touring with uh, you know, Skip driving the spreader and, uh, and this ensemble of, of, of musicians. You know, one of my favorite things to maybe keep under my, you know, under my sleeve are touring stories, crazy road stories, stuff that uh, um, where things just fall apart and they go wrong it, with a bunch of cellos in the back of a van. There's got to be some road experiences that, uh, you know, at the time, yeah, that really was probably not the most fun. But now you can look back and kind of laugh. Any, any, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you can share like publicly. Both sprinters were breaking down, trying to get to San Luis Obispo. That was fun. So we had two sprinters out. It was just a, like a week long summer tour and it was the most painful, awful tour I think we've ever been on. Cause both of the sprinters just kept breaking down. I don't know. That, yeah. that one came yeah. to me first. Get, what was for you? Well, the, the, you I caught. remember that night that um, we, had to, we had to get the uh, sprinter van repaired in Grass Valley. And most of you went down in another sprinter van to San Luis Obispo and Kevin and I rolled up at five minutes to showtime. Yeah. It and, was no kidding. Yeah. It was, we were like literally walked in, took our instruments out and walked out on stage. Oh man. <laughs> and then you had literally zero, zero empathy for their just like, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. they don't care, man. It's all about selling tickets, right? Selling really tickets and drinks. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> but, <laughs> But honestly, uh, but the w one that really comes to mind for me is we played in Jackson Hole, Wyoming on a Tuesday night and Kevin and I hopped in the van and we got to like Maryland just outside of D.C. Um, in time for soundcheck on Friday afternoon. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we had a straight shot from from Jackson Hole to D.C. Yeah. No, um, no gigs in between. 
<clears throat> well, no, most of the band flew out there, and they actually had to do a a school performance, so they used borrowed cellos to do that. But oh. we we were bringing the cellos, so uh, yeah, we we drove straight there, and um, I mean, we we stopped, we stayed in Bismarck one night, and we stayed in outside of Pittsburgh the next day, um, and but we we rolled in, and uh, and it was like, yes, it was it was. Uh, uh, nail biting knuckle you know white knuckle like kind of driving but the weather was with us uh we only ran into traffic around chicago um so for the this most part in your memory you know every <laughs> minute of that drive i can tell well you... <laughs> i remember a lot and we stopped into this we couldn't get too far because there were like so many animals running across the road and coming out of jackson hole that we had to drive really slowly. So we drove for about two hours and stopped in the most podunk, tiny, um, tiny off the beaten path uh, town uh, hotel in Wyoming. And we woke up in the morning and Kevin said, oh, there's a good coffee shop up here. And I went, really? And we went up there and it was like total hipster vibe, like <laughs> guy in it with like arm garters and like a steamer that they steamed the cup as they made it. It was like the best coffee I've ever had on tour in the middle of nowhere. You know, you might <laughs> find that in Lewistown too when you're there. I have a feeling that, that Dave and Renee could probably point you towards the uh, the real hip coffee shops. But uh, it, those oftentimes are not locals, right? Those were not uh, you know, Wyoming bred coffee baristas. You know, these are guys. Oh, that, yeah. You know, I'm out of LA, man. Or, or, you know, screw Portland. It's not weird enough anymore. I got to bring this to Wyoming. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, you know, the, it's. Um, I think those stories. You know, of course, there are memories where you're on stage and, and we talked about getting lost. You know, you guys are playing music that is not only iconic, but your interpretations of them are, are really, really special. Uh, but some of those other memories. You know, if kids, if you're still watching again, here's me on that soapbox. That's called paying dues when you're driving from Jackson Hole to Maryland uh, nonstop in a sprinter, you know. But um, well, and the, the early days, too, just had so much dues paying because, I mean, we would we really would play just punk rock clubs if we didn't have a symphony hall gig that night. And so it'd be like at Dempsey's Aquarium in Fargo, North Dakota, a little oh. punk rock club, second floor, 20 people. I and mean, we go on at one in the morning, man, I think. Anymore with this group, I'm like, oh man, I love Cello Project. We're on at 7:30, and I'm done by 10. <laughs> but those those early days were like we were taking like the punk rock gigs where you're on after midnight, and I don't know, I don't want to do that again. I was gonna say that you, that's okay when you're 20. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's a lot more difficult as we get older. You know, I, know, I just turned 79, Kevin. I'm so, yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm 79. I've lost count, but I'm. Pretty sure it's like I know that I put that many years in my body, even though I would not have that many chronological years. But, uh, uh, you know, so speaking of the rock and roll vibe, Skip, last time I got to see you play was right in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, Portland has this really fun cultural event called Sinferno at Dante's every Sunday night. Uh, and it's uh, a mixture of burlesque stuff and magic shows and all sorts of a little bit risque and a lot of rock and roll and, and very Portland and who better to open up a night like that than Skip Von Kuski and his cello, right? You were doing uh, cellotronic at that point. Yeah, yeah. I, in fact, um, <clears throat> when Dante's was closed, they, I would actually go and do a live stream from their Facebook page every Sunday, and they'd pay me. And uh, so I, I said, well, why don't I do it on Sunday before Sinferno starts? So I would be on the, the second stage the Limbo Lounge um, doing that. And the first week that they opened, I did that. And the owner, uh, Frank, came in and went, why aren't you playing on the main stage? That's stupid. <laughs> you know, I went, I'm on the main stage. And so they pretty much made me the opening act. Now, um, occasionally, it, we're getting to a point where occasionally, like, I won't be playing next Sunday. Um, but most every Sunday, unless it's a special event, somebody from out of town, I've been uh, opening up for 45 minutes um, from 9 to 9.45, and the Sinferno show goes on at 10, and it's been crazy and fun. I love it. Yeah, man. You haven't had to set your cello on fire yet, I don't think, right? Um, I, I, I don't have a stunt cello for that, but someday. <laughs> 
I, 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 just, I keep picturing one of the, the fire breathers to, uh, to accidentally, you know, torch you, but uh, keep the hair product down, right? You don't, you don't want, uh, and so tomorrow night, uh, February 2nd at Dante's, uh, you and Michael Damron and someone else is open up for Storm. Is that right? Who yeah, else? Is- um, uh, Eric McFadden is oh, yeah. actually um, uh, playing with Storm and using the, uh, her band to do his set. Um, and uh, Mike D and I will uh, we're going to do a short set, and then Kristen and I, my partner, are going to do uh, like three songs that uh, we sing and play together. So, um, so it'll be like I don't get to do that very often on Sundays before Sinferno because she's working right the door there. So. Um, but occasionally she'll run up and sing a song with me at the end of the set and make me look good. So, <laughs> you know, okay. So Portlanders, if you've uh, frequented Dante's and you did not realize this, the, the lovely gal that is not only checking your, taking your money at the door and, and checking your ID, uh, she's also a fantastic uh, performer with Skip as well. So Kristen, is it Holovnia? Is that how you pronounce the last name? Whole lot of Lovnia whole lot of love yeah yeah man she is a a dynamo and uh i'm hopeful to see her tomorrow night as well but uh um what so tell me about what people can expect tomorrow i mean i know a little bit about what storm's bringing but uh you want to talk about tomorrow's show yeah well i i'm delighted to be a part of it it's for one it's 2 2 22 and it's the 22nd anniversary of dante's the club so and the 20th anniversary of storm moving to portland um also uh another tidbit like during the pandemic um storm would often call me and say hey can i come play with you tonight before it's inferno and so i never knew exactly when it was going to happen but she would show up and we'd sit in the basement for 10 minutes going well what song can we do together and you know she's like oh you know how about the how about black hole sun how about unforgiven um so we've gotten to play a little bit more together and actually cello project once played with storm at dante's many many years ago um i like over 10 years ago i'm sure (laughs) <laughs> that um, seems like such a perfect pairing you know I, over the last few years as storm has been playing with pink martini that was a really cool collaboration and, and something i never expected but i know china forbes the the singer took time off right to have a baby and then they um, brought storm in to to fill that spot for a bit i believe and uh but portland chiller project and storm large just seems to me like a perfect fit We've had fun every time we've been lucky enough to play with her, for sure. I'm sure. Uh, tomorrow, um, well, if you're outside Portland and you've not been aware of Storm Large, it's a surprise. Uh, she was on America's Got Talent a few months ago and, and just, uh, I think, right? Was that? Uh, uh, yeah, that was it. Uh, this last summer she was on that, and she had been on Rockstar Supernova, like, 10 years ago 2006 i was there man i went and watched her perform anything anything live nice. yeah that was a good one I actually as she stage dove into the crowd i was uh i was blessed to be in that crowd but uh yeah her show is ridiculously cool and i, I saw some video that she's doing uh old school stuff ladylike which was the song that she wrote with the rock star supernova guys back in that era and uh um, so it'll be a fun show tomorrow night's going to be a, a barn burner of a freaking Wednesday night in uh, Portland. And just so you know, too, I think there were only 30 tickets left as of last night. So it's probably sold out at this point, but, um, but it's worth a try. <laughs> yeah. If you're just, just in case, go check out Dante's Inferno, uh, Dante's PDX and, and get yourself some tickets. Um, you know, I know we just got a few minutes left, but uh, I was hoping if uh, if it's cool, Skip, I know that with your backdrop there, this is a performance room right? <laughs> that you're in right now. I would love to give people just a taste of what they might be able to see when they come out to see you tomorrow night. Yeah, I, I'd like that too. And I have um, run the cello in here, so you'll have to tell me whether you're getting uh, sound from it. Okay. 
but I just happen to be holding a cello oh, right here. Just happen to be. <laughs> Most everything that we do on this show is completely, uh, you know, off the spur of the moment. But, but I did ask, and um, so before you start, I just, uh, I do. What I'll probably do is take myself off camera, and uh, and Doug, uh, um, I really want to thank you, uh, folks. If you're interested at all. Um, Go first of all. Go to PortlandCelloProject.com. Uh, pick up one of the uh, the new records the, or the Purple Rain uh, tribute that they did. Uh, check out the tour dates because it sounds like you guys are going to have a good handful of tour dates that are lead us into the spring. And um, and I really appreciate your time here. It's been a blast getting to know you. So Thanks for doing it. Thank can't you. Can't wait. To, can't wait to see you live. Yeah, uh, guys. If you got here late, make sure you go back to the beginning of this thing. There's uh, there's a lot of information about what Portland Cello Project started out with and uh, some upcoming tour dates as well. So um, I want to thank Doug Jenkins for being here and, uh, and Skip Monkuski. Let's, uh, let's hear you rock and roll. I'll take it away, <laughs> my friend. All right. Um, first, uh, let me know if it's coming through because uh, I'm unsure. That sounds perfect. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just saying I'm not hearing. Uh, oh. I'm not hearing any loop here, so I, I won't be able to do what I'm doing tomorrow in, uh, in that sense, but uh, it's really odd. Hmm. Play Bach. Yeah, that's, I guess that's what I'm going to do. All right. <laughs> I like this, that we've got heckling right here on the screen. This is good. I'm well practiced. I heckle Skip a lot. Nice. <laughs> and, and if, are you going to be there tomorrow night, Doug? I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. I, I have another gig my, my, my Wednesday nights. So, uh, Of course you do. All right. So maybe on the side, you could fill me in with the best heckle lines that you like to use for skips so that I can throw yeah, out. You got it. I got right. some effective ones. Yes. Okay. 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 Hey, Doug, um, thanks again for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to take you. this phone on screen and skip okay. Von Husky, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Okay. Here's a little acoustic love. I'm going to move the mic to uh, better reflect the cello.
Unbelievable, buddy. That was so beautiful, man. So warm. I am so grateful. I can't even tell you. What a gift. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow there'll be fat beats behind it mm -hmm. and, and uh, vocals and guitars as well as cello. So, um, oh, yeah, we what should a have gift. fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, if, unfortunately, if people can't make that one uh, and they can't catch a Portland cello project, um, how do they find Skip's music? Um, well, um, I Spotify hasn't pulled my stuff off yet, so okay. <laughs> um, there's there or or YouTube uh, uh, Cello Tronic or Skip Vonkowski as it's spelled on the screen. Yeah, um, I I'm doing a solo show every second Friday of the month at uh, Edgefield Winery on a fr Friday night, uh, seven to nine. Okay. Um, that's always free uh, to get in anyway. If nice. you can resist the wine, it's free. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's best. Uh, I'm on Facebook and Instagram at, at Chalooper. Um, Chalooper, okay. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Man, I well, I can't wait to see you tomorrow night. I'm going to be seeing you at uh, Dante's with uh, Storm and Eric McFadden and uh, Michael Damron, Mike D. Uh, please give my best to uh, Kristen, and uh, hopefully I'll see her tomorrow night as well. You bet. Uh, my thanks to you and Doug Jenkins and Renee and Dave Rummins back in Lewistown, Montana. Uh, make sure that uh, you go to uh, hiddenmt.com and so you can see Stone City's show in Lewistown, Montana. You know what? Even if you're not in Lewistown, make a road trip. April's the best time to go out to Montana. So hit that link below. And uh, if you can't make that one, go to PortlandCelloProject.com and uh, grab all the tour dates, get some music, and uh, spread the wealth, man. We got some good uh, good artistic talent right here. So Skip Bonkowski, thank you, brother. I love you, man. My pleasure. And thanks for uh, bringing cello awareness to your show. Absolutely. <laughs> and we got we got to mix it up. Uh folks, um, if you got yeah. Oh, just uh, I wanted to do a quick plug to um if you go to the Portland Cello Project Facebook page or YouTube page, Diane Chaplin is uh doing uh weekly Tuesday night uh I think they call it Taco Tuesdays, T okay. Cello Taco Tuesdays. Um so she's on probably right now. Um, okay. And certainly in weeks to come. So um shout out <laughs> combining two of the fantastic things man so um all right well in uh in just a, a short bit i'll be seeing you folks if you got here late make sure you go back and check out the beginning so you can see the, the great conversation i would love it if you've not done so go to youtube.com slash all access live with kevin rankin hit the subscribe you can uh, go back and look at past episodes and see this sucker from the beginning i will have this episode and all others at access kevin dot com in roughly five minutes so thanks again for tuning in i will be back here with tom grant we're going to do a live episode from his studio on thursday at five o'clock so tune back in five o'clock thursday five o'clock pacific and i uh, will have tom grant in the meantime i'll be seeing you live on stage and skip i'll probably end up doing a little facebook live and sharing some of your love tomorrow so awesome Thank yeah. you again, my friend. Thanks again to all you guys. Portland Chiller Project, guys. Thanks again.